In this video, we are going to discuss how we could able to use this authenticate token that we got in our earlier video from the deserialization and use it to get the products from our API controllers. So if you remember, in our last video, we discussed the token that we can obtain using the API authenticate login by using the username and password. We also deserialized that value, we got the token. And now that we have this value, and the next thing we do is to go to this get products controller and to pass the token into the header so that we could able to get the authentication done from there. So in order to achieve that, we're going to go again to this particular test over here and then we're going to start writing the code. But before we even start writing the code, let's make this particular data that we are obtaining from the token into a reusable method so that we could able to use the same call from that particular method, right? So we are going to do that particular part right now. So we're just going to copy this whole method and I'm going to write a private method here. So I'm going to say private and it's going to be a string type returning token. So it's going to be a string because this is going to be asynchronous. So I'm going to say async of task of string and get token, something like that over here. I'm going to paste this whole code and we're going to just return this particular value. That's it. And this authenticate is the one which is returning that value. So what we can do is we can also get the token out of it really, which is the token. There we go. So it is correct. And there is some error coming up, which is using the conditional access. We could be able to do that as well. So let's do that conditional access something like this there we go so now we have the conditional access and we have the get token over here and get rid of this one so now you can start looking at that this particular code i'm trying to reuse everywhere this is not quite right as i told you in the starting of the second lecture we are going to make this playwright create new context in a separate class file we are going to do that pretty quickly pretty soon in our next lecture but for now this is going to be the method that we are talking about to reuse this token we will come back later and refactor this particular part but there we go we have this particular method right now the get token method and now that we are going to write one more test it's going to be a fact test once again and we can write pretty much exactly the same thing so i'm going to again copy this whole thing and i'm going to paste it over here this is going to be get product and this particular get product api is going to be a get operation so you know what we actually changed this to request context before and we forgot to reuse that same naming convention so let me do that in all the code and over here i'm gonna say we're gonna perform a get operation so var response once again is equal to await of the request context dot get async and the API that we are going to be processing is going to be the slash product slash uh, get products by ID or name, whichever that we like, we can use it. I'm probably going to use this get product by ID. I know it's not going to work, but I'm just going to copy this URL from here and I'm going to paste it over here. That is what I wanted. And now I also need to pass the header which is going to hold the authentication token for me so the way i can do it is once again using the new api request context options which is going to be the new and over here i'm going to pass what is called as an headers and within this headers i am going to be using what is called as the token to be passed over here which is by means of the authorization so if you just go over here to the controller let me do a tryout once again i will tell you what i really mean so one two three four five six and if i execute you will see that i get a token so let me copy this whole token and go to the authorize you see that i have to use this bearer in the prefix and then i need to paste the token and once i authorize and then once i do the get product by id I used to get this product but if you see the payload over here you will notice that it 
accepts an authorization colon bearer and then the token so authorization is the key and the bearer with the token is the value that we need to pass as a header so you can see that hyphen h is for the header so now that i need to pass the header informations here and the way we can do it with the header is in playwright is it's an i enumerable of the key value pairs of the string strings which means i need to somehow use an i enumerable type of the key value pair and the key value pair in c sharp is basically a dictionary type so i'm going to use the dictionary type over here and i'm also going to be using a collection initializer syntax for c sharp once again this is quite interesting and new so i'm going to be doing that i really love the matter of fact that c sharp has got so many different syntax to do the same operation and that too you can reduce the number of lines of code so i'm going to do that over here so you can see that i can create the key value pair much easily something like this so i'm going to pass the authentication i'm sorry it's not authentication it's i think it's authorization i'm going to pass the bearer token and i'm going to do a string interpolation here and bearer and i'm going to pass the token so where do i get this token so i can just call the get token method to do it that's it so this is the get token method that we just extracted out from our previous test so i'm going to pass this token straight away over here that's it this is going to do the magics that we're looking for so let's see what is going to be the response coming out of it so you see that this is the header initialization basically we have got a dictionaries of the collection initializer syntax in c sharp and then we have passed the key value pair for the dictionary for the headers and then once we have the headers information we can get the response out so i'm going to get the response let's see what is the response body probably looks like so once again it's going to be the json async so i'm going to say var of data await of the json async i'm going to put a breakpoint here and uh, let's try to debug this code and see what's going to basically happen so you'll notice that we now came to this particular point and if we do see the response the response still says it's an invalid or unauthorized and the reason being i think the get token method is not being resolved or something has happened over there so if you just stop this execution and you will notice that the get token method is basically an asynchronous method and if we just call this asynchronous method something like this in c sharp it is always going to create a problem you need to use the await keyword to do that so if you use await of the get token over here something like this it is not going to be a right way of doing it in c sharp it is not recommended way of doing it in c sharp as well so it's always better that you create all the variables on the top of it so that you can really reuse it so i'm going to say var of token and then i can call a weight of the get token something like this so this is far better to really use it uh, because you will have this get token method being resolved so i can then pass this token over here so that we could able to work with it so let's put a breakpoint probably here because our test index grew last time and we'll even see if the token value is even being resolved before even it goes to the header for this particular request so if we go back to the token once again you will see that the token is still null i think there is something wrong really so i'm going to put a breakpoint over here on the get token method so we can see that the tokens are coming and i i know what it is you remember in our last video during the token uh, we actually made the t as capital letter and the response just coming up is going to be in small letter uh, and it is because we have to use that uh, json uh, serializer thingy which we have not did it so json serialization option and over here we need to use the property name case sensitive as true uh, which i completely forgot to do it and that's the reason this code is not really executing that's my problem i think i've completely missed it to revert the code back which is good and now if i put a breakpoint um debugging there hopefully this will execute so what is the token there we go we have the token value right now which is good and if we see 
what's going to happen for the response this time. And you see that the API response is 200 this time, which is good. And if we see the JSON value, and we get the JSON value this time, which is great. So you can see that it gives us all the data. Like name as keyboard, description is null, but price is 150 in the component, and everything is coming up. There are two components associated with this particular product, so both of them are coming up, which is great. So this way, you can see that we could able to perform a get operation using the authorization that we can do using a bearer token in playwright api testing which is great so we have achieved that so this is the power of the playwrights api to perform these operation but now that we have so many challenges here right we have to somehow deserialize even this particular value into a type to see what is the particular value so you can see that the type is now kind of increasing there are so many different properties that we need to create in a concrete class and then we need to reuse it and then we also have to somehow fix this particular code where we don't have to keep calling this particular playwright each and every time so we are going to do all this refactoring in our upcoming videos of this course